Peace, y'all. Yeah, this last name the God, CEO of Tiplo. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and get at me now. You know what I mean? Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all my subscribers and everybody who's going to subscribe. Like and share my videos. Y'all know what it is. Now, check it. Let me get right into this. Today, I'm making this video about Alpo Martinez being way smarter than people give him credit for. All right. This is for all the people who don't know the history of Alpo Martinez. Let me give you a brief history of Alpo Martinez. All right, Alpo Martinez um, was a, a, a guy growing up in Spanish Harlem. And um, he used to go away to um, the, like the Fresh Air Fund upstate to like the Catskills and upstate New York, you know what I mean? And um, stay with a white family up there. He said that was one of the most experience i mean one of the best times of his life you feel me um just chilling with these 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 white people they treated them very nice and i seen the white lady speak on the video yeah they had like a genuine love for alpo martinez because alpo has always been a charming and charismatic guy even when he was a child he was a smooth little brave child and he was mad cool with it you feel me um well anyway let's fast forward a little bit Alpo gets with this this older guy when he's like 15 and um they saying that his name was Randy or Alpo said that his name was Randy and and Randy was a jux dude and just for educational purposes jux is just like stick up so they used to go up into like Dominican spots and try to jux them well they not try to jux them they was juxing them according to Alpo Martina but they used to jux the spots and Randy and all them was black and Alpo was Spanish. So when the people be telling people codes and shit in Spanish, Alpo be known, but they thought he was black. But Alpo, you know, name is Martinez. So he's mad fluent with the Spanish language. So he knew what the Dominicans were saying where they hid the stuff and this and that. So by the time they ran up in the spot, you know, they had the info already because Alpo, Alpo knew Spanish. But anyway, let's go fast forward to that. So, him and Rich Porter get locked up. I think it was the Bronx House of Detention in New York City for all those that's not from New York. And um, Alpo, you know, meets Rich and they converse in there or whatever. And they like, when we get home, we're going to do our thing together. We're going to make some moves. You know what I mean? Get to the money or whatever. So, when they came home, Rich kept his word with Alpo. And he went up there and seen him. And he seen AZ. And they always like, all right, fuck it. We could get on. So I guess somebody asked him, do you want the jukebox or whatever? He ended up taking the jukebox because a lot of stick-up kids was fucking with it. But when Alpo got the jukebox, Alpo was already doing juxes. And he already, he already was with the, the winning team on the stick-up shit. So he knew the rules of sticking shit up and being aggressive with your gun. So he wasn't scared to do that. You know, I mean? that's one thing about Poe, and I will give him his credit. He wasn't scared to get aggressive with his gun. You know, there's a lot of drug dealers and so-called tough boys that ain't really tough without their banger. Paul hold it down, hands, knives, and guns. And that's what any thorough nigga gonna do, you feel me? But um, getting into the facts, so he started getting, they became multi-kilo dealers. Everybody knows the history that they started buying luxury foreign cars and becoming the talk of the town. And when I say becoming the talk of the town, they was becoming the talk of New York. Alpo Rich and AZ Not taking nothing away from no other Big time drug dealers Cause there was cats like Fritz, Bless the Dead And a whole bunch of other niggas That was getting to the guap too And there was a guy that was probably holding More than Alpo and Rich or whatever In New York But they weren't flamboyant And they wasn't young in age like these dudes So these dudes was really getting to it But there was a lot of dudes getting to it Don't get it misconstrued Cause New York is my town and I just want y'all to get the real feel of New York Not just Alpo, Rich, and AZ was getting money There was plenty of us getting money in the 80s and the 90s Don't get it twisted So anyway, um, Alpo was one of the smartest dudes And that's why I'm saying y'all don't give him a lot of credit For being smart as he is And that's why I personally think that he faked his death again But like I said, it's neither here nor there But this is for my YouTube channel, and I'm going to just give it to y'all, my perspective on it. But look, 
So they became multi-kilo dealers. And then they started doing their thing or whatever. And they was getting to the money hard. They was busting out foreign joints and all that. So, you know, when you get into the money, a lot of jealousy and envy comes from a lot of motherfuckers. And it comes from close friends that you wouldn't expect. And you want me to tell you the reason why that shit is because people feel entitlement. They feel like, since I know this nigga and he got a couple of million dollars, he got to break bread with me because that's my man. But they be forgetting that this nigga went out there and he earned this shit. He put his head on the chopping block and got away successful and he earned that shit. And then everybody coming with their hand out and it's not just you asking for shit. It's a whole bunch of other motherfuckers asking for shit. So that's where they ran into a little bit of problem. Because AZ, niggas ran up in the spot where he was at, clapped him in his head, clapped other people in the apartment. And bless all the people that died in there because I'm not taking that for granted or just using that for my YouTube channel. I'm just giving y'all the facts. But AZ got clapped, so AZ got clapped in his dome and he was like, yo, this shit is serious and I ain't fucking with the game no more because the game did me something filthy, you feel me? So AZ was like, I'm gonna bow out gracefully according to him, you feel me? And um, Alporn Rich kept continuing, but look, at the same time, around the same time, Rich Porter Uncle Apple, I did the video about Apple Porter, so if y'all haven't checked that video, go check out Apple Porter because he's the one who set Richard Porter up because allegedly he was asking Richard for money and Richard was like, here, he'll go 5,000 or whatever, but the nigga want 50 Gs, 150 Gs, thinking this nigga got crazy, crazy millions and everybody want the entitlement. So nigga like, oh, my nephew doing me dirty. All right, let's set his little brother up to get snatched. He'll pay to get his little brother back, which is some crazy fucking foul shit to set your own nephew up to get killed. But this is what people do for the love of money, so know that. And, like, let me say this again. If y'all haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. It's called Keep Low. I am Lashing the guard, the CEO of that. I appreciate y'all all rocking out with me. And salute to everybody that's rocking with me from the heart. We locked in, and we're going to do this. We're going to take this channel somewhere else. Well, anyway... So at the same time, Rich Porter, Uncle Apple, he sets Donnell Porter. And I want to take time out to say God bless um, Donnell Porter and bless Rich Porter. But I really want to say God bless Donnell. And this is a, a thing people get misconstrued too. Everybody like, oh, Rich was a good dude uh, and all this shit. But look, things happen to drug dealers. You know what I mean? So drug dealers get killed. They get kidnapped. They get extorted. They get all kind of shit. And that's what you get being a drug dealer. You feel me? So it's really not. I don't say I'm not sympathetic to the fact because I don't want to see nobody lose their life. But I understand nigga was a drug dealer playing in these streets. And that's how shit go in the cold mean streets. And plus, like Alpo said, Rich had his little devil horns too. And I'm not saying that. That's what Alpo said. You feel me? But the little boy was like 12, 13 years old. And look, I know all fear and love and war. So ain't no rules to the game. You know what I mean? So if a nigga snatch your little infant... It's all fair, I guess, but it's a dirty game. And if you ain't playing in it right, you're going to get yourself kind of fucked up. You feel me? But um, let me say this. So Rich little brother gets snatched up. Now, Rich is, in my perspective of it, he going out his mind like any human being would, trying to get his little brother back. You know what I mean? Who want to see their little brother kidnapped by some real animal niggas that'll really bang that little baby out? You feel me? Which I think was wrong as well. And God bless Don Donnell Porter. But, like... Alpo was like, fuck it, yo, Rich, if you need me to bring some shooters or whatever, I'll do that. And we can go terrorize a whole bunch of motherfuckers till we find out who got your brother. Or we could just do it whatever way you want. If you need some money or something, I'll give you this much. According to him, he said, I'll give you this much to help get your brother back. And I feel Alpo was trying to do what he had to do. But the nigga still had his own life to live, even though Rich poor the brother got snatched up. So that's what he did. He kept continuing to live his life. So the nigga went down to DC, started fucking with Wayne Perry. Wayne Perry allegedly had like over a hundred bodies. So that's the right nigga that you want with you if you're gonna be doing some street shit and you want a nigga that banging out and plus you banging out too. So it's all love, like that kind of shit. And that's a good protector. Like a nigga, not that Alpo can't protect itself, but you just have good enforcer niggas around you and you know how to move when you dealing with the drug activity in the street. That's just if you didn't, this is for educational purpose. I'm not influencing nobody to get into that drug game because that's a dirty game and you will get some years or you will get some scars or you will get hurt. And look, you get some money out of it, you're going to get mad bitches and luxury cars and all that, but you might live good for like 10, 12 years. 
And then they're going to wash you up and give you light without the eligibility of parole with an 848, some kingpin shit. And that's even if you don't got no murders on your case. But if you got murders on your case, then they really going to wipe you out. And they're going to lights out is when you get light without the eligibility of parole. You feel me? Dig me? So I'm just giving it to y'all raw. Yo, kids, stay away from that drug game, man. And yo, you way better than putting some cracks in your ass and being in somebody's hallway selling something. And look, a lot of people in the 80s and... 90s, they wasn't afforded the same opportunities that y'all being afforded. Y'all being afforded opportunities to get on the internet, to, you know, look for jobs, to learn a lot of things, to increase your intelligence. Remember, knowledge is power. So if you increase your knowledge, you're going to increase your power and you can do anything you put your mind to. Just remember that. This last in the guard. Again, keep loads of company. All right. So Alpo goes out to DC. He gets with Wayne Perry and, um, and then he ends up, some boys shot him in DC. And um, so he got with Wayne and um, he started shooting niggas back and doing all kind of crazy infamous shit. And he was just keep on going with his shit. He wasn't no pussy nigga. He just kept going with it. So in the, anyway, he ends up getting gobbled up. And just for educational purpose, that's when you get apprehended by them alphabet dudes. Alphabet dudes, FBI, CIA, DEA, that shit. So them niggas came at him aggressively and successfully. They gobbled Alpo up. So now, this is where I'm showing y'all this nigga was smarter than the average bear because, look, the nigga was saying, how can I get myself out of this when I'm copping out to 14 bodies? Now, you got to be a smart nigga to be able to sit down with the feds and negotiate a deal. And look, don't get me fucked up. Don't get it fucked up. I will say this one more time. Don't get me fucked up. I do not condone becoming a federal informant. I do not condone condone becoming a rat ass bastard and not saying that's what alpo is or that anybody that rats and tell police on people that did nothing to them or even people that did something to you if you're working with the police you are bogus you feel me and that's just the real shit alpo will tell you that and look even though alpo will tell you I did what was right for me, and I respect that at the same time. Not the snitching shit. I respect the fact that he said, I doing what's right for Poe. Like, Poe life, like the nigga always say, I do what's right for me. So I'm not glamorizing his snitching and none of that, but I'm just saying that this nigga did 14 murders, still came back out to the streets of Harlem, used the feds to get him in the witness protection program in Maine as Abraham Rodriguez. He was under the radar for like four years without nobody knowing shit. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. This nigga's mad smart. Nobody knew shit about him being in the witness protection program, but him wanting to be flamboyant and just come back and show his presence. If he is dead, that's where he fucked up. But if he's faking his death again, it still was some ingenious shit. Cause he probably told the feds, I'm going to come back and show myself. And and then we're going to just say somebody killed me. They could have put blanks in the gun. I don't know. But they could have faked it out. And there's a probability of that. And I know a lot of people saying, nigga, this nigga's dead. Nigga, did you go to his funeral? Did you see this nigga laying in the box like everybody saw Rich Porter? Did you see this nigga get buried in the dirt? All right, then, if you ain't see that, then don't say this nigga is definitely dead. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of niggas that fake they death. You feel me? But y'all get in the comments and y'all tell me what y'all think. And I just wanted to do this video again to let y'all know that Alpo Martinez was smarter than niggas give him credit for. And let me just say this as well. Alpo Martinez, if he didn't do the informant shit, because he already solidified his reputation as a big time drug dealer that a lot of people, not just me at my at the at the time when I was young, but a lot of people had respect and admiration for this nigga. Him, AZ and Rich, but they had it for Alpo more. You feel me? Because Alpo bust his gun and he was being aggressive and he wasn't letting no stick up boys or no extortion niggas coming at him. You see what that nigga said? What? Preaching them come at me, I'll bang them niggas out. He was serious. You know what I mean? So y'all get in the comments and let me know what y'all think. This is in the Guard. Subscribe to the channel. I got the Keep Low Production shirts. And yo, y'all get them for Keep Low Production shirts. Y'all can get at me in the comments. I got every color Keep Low shirt. And I appreciate your support. This is in the Guard. And I am gone. Peace and prosperity to all of y'all.